Well, tonight I wanted to talk about voices. We all have voices, correct? How many of you have a voice? A couple hands didn't go up. All right. All right. A couple of us have voices. Some of us don't, maybe. But I want to talk about voices and how we use them and how we speak, how we praise the Lord, how we bring the word throughout the land. And I'm excited about this because I've been studying the book of Samuel lately, and I'm, I'm taking from what Samuel has learned in his early years in, in 1 Samuel chapter 3, and how his life changed in a moment, the moment he understood and heard the voice of God. And so we're going to be starting there this evening, but I want to just do a little bit. I'm gonna, how many of you are like me? You're an external processor. You love to talk. Anybody out there love to talk? I love to talk. I do. You can, when I'm at work, I, I would rather talk things out than listen, which sometimes is a problem when other people are trying to talk to you and you don't even listen to them, but you just keep talking. And I feel like all we have to do is just solve this problem. If we talk this out, if we solve this problem, if I get this done, then everything's going to be okay. And I've done that in my spiritual life as well, as I've done a lot of talking. And lately, God's been really getting on me. If you have a voice, but do you listen to the right voice? Do you listen to the proper voices in your life? And as I've been studying through Samuel in, in chapter 3, I was brought to the verse where he hears the voice of God for the first time. And if you're familiar with the story, we're going to start in 1 Samuel chapter 3. We're going to be talking about verse 10. But before that, in the verses before is, as we know in the story, Samuel hears the voice of God, and he, he doesn't know, and so he runs off and says, here I am, or well, why are you calling me? And you know, he's like, well, I'm not calling you. So he says, next time he, he calls you to respond to God. And so in verse 10, it says, the Lord came and stood there calling uh, to Samuel, saying, Samuel, Samuel, the, the, then Samuel said, speak, for your servant is listening. And I was reading that verse, and I, I was thinking just, I've read this story a thousand times. We've, people have talked about Samuel, and and all that he was, and his life, and I was like, okay, this is the story of Samuel, but something stuck out to me this time that had never stuck out before, and this is why I love Yeshua, and I love God, and I love the Word so much, is because no matter how many times we read one thing, it's never the same. And it reflects even to me the character of God, that no matter he is our God, but he is always more than we ever thought he was going to be. And no matter where we are in our lives, no matter what we're going through, he is never the same, in the same way he never wants us to be the same. And so as I was reading this scripture, I actually jumped to the message version because I loved what he said here. It says, then God came and they stood before him exactly as before. And it says, calling out to Samuel, it says, Samuel, Samuel, and Samuel answers, speak, for I'm your servant. I am ready to listen. And when I read that ready to listen, I just had to stop. And I said, how many times when we have said, I'm listening, we really don't? I've done it with my wife. I'm going to admit some things here. My wife's going to be like, yes, he's finally admitting to these things. But I don't always listen when my wife talks. I'll be honest. It happened even today. While I was preparing the message, I'm sitting and my wife asked me something. And I go, yeah, that sounds great. And she's doing, she's making lunch. And I said, oh, that smells great. What are you making? She goes, do you not remember just two minutes ago? I said, this is what I'm going to make. Do you want to eat that? And I was like, oh, Listening. Even as I work on this, God's reminding me about listening. But it came to the voice of God, and when I, I read, ready to listen, it reminded me that in my life and in my quiet time and in our time with the Lord, how often do we ready ourselves before we listen for the voice of God? That for some of us, we seek out the voice of God very quickly. And we'll sit down and we'll be in prayer and we'll be like, okay, God, I'm ready, 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 I'm ready. I'm ready. And, for, and you just keep waiting and waiting and waiting, and you're like, God, I can't hear you. But did you ready yourself before you readied your ears? Did you ready your heart before you readied your mind? Did you ready your spirit before you readied yourself and you said, you know what, I need to ready. And when I, th I thought about being ready to hear the voice of God, I thought about the things of my life of worship, of what I've read and then the scriptures that I've heard. And have I read the scriptures and then looked for God to speak to it, or did I just read it like I have so many times, Samuel, and said, oh, that's a great story. Look at how great God is. I didn't stop and listen for the voice of God that was trying to teach me a lesson that was happening at this moment. What is it to hear the voice of God? When we really think about it, when we sit down and we hear so many people talk about it, and we, we, I used to work with youth, so I'd hear all the time, I've never heard the voice of God. I don't ever hear the voice of God. How do I hear the voice of God? And it was always a hard question to answer because it's different for every person. Some people hear it audibly. Some people hear it through prayer. Some hear it through worship. Some hear it just through reading the scriptures. We all hear it a different way. But for me, 
To hear the voice of God means that I have heard a calling from God and the hardest part and the biggest part of that is being obedient to his voice. That when we hear the voice of God, we have to be obedient. And when we're called to be obedient, it's not easy. Uh, back in the United States where my wife and I are from, we had a dog. And I remember as a puppy, we had this dog. And we love this dog. And this dog, we're, we're those dog people that like, our dog is like our child. It had a name. We to this day miss it. And we'll talk about it and look at each other and be like, oh, our dog, Lucy. And I remember having this dog. And I remember the one time is what we called the puppy crazies that she would just go absolutely nuts. And we had bought an off-white couch, which was, well, we didn't have kids, so we didn't know what that meant yet. We were like, oh, off-white, this looks awesome. <laughs> and so it rained that day, and we let the dog in the backyard, and our grass had died, so it was pure mud. And when the dog came in, we didn't catch her, and she thought, white couch. <laughs> this is exactly where I'm going to go. And so she runs up, and we're screaming, as she runs back and forth on this white couch, and we can't catch her. And the white couch goes to a mud-colored couch in about five minutes. And Lucy would not be obedient to my voice. I would yell at her. I'd be like, Lucy, listen, Lucy, Lucy. And I would yell at her, and she'd just be like, we're playing a game. You're chasing me. I'm going to jump over you. Well, let's run upstairs and get the carpet dirty. And she was a puppy. But the thing was, is, is I remember the obedience. She had not yet been trained to my voice. So she didn't know how to recognize my call. She didn't know how to recognize what I was trying to tell her. My wife and I were talking about this, and she told me a story when she was a child, and I'm really worried about our children because we both tended to wander off as kids. I was the kid that had the backpack strap on you with a leash, and that wasn't wrong or anything, and I would just, I would take off. I would see something, and I was like, that looks entertaining. Now, I come to find out my wife is the same. So I'm, I don't know what we're going to do with our kids, tracking systems, I don't know what's going to happen. But she told me a story of when she, would, when she would wander away, she would walk down aisles of stores, she always knew how to find her mom because of her mom's keychain. It had certain medals, but she recognized the sound of it. And she could be anywhere in a store, and if she stopped and listened for her mom to walk, she would recognize that noise, and she would know exactly where her mother was. If she found that noise, she found her. And again, with these stories, I just think of how do we hear the voice of God as we continually seek it? that we chase after it, and when we start to recognize it, we go to it, and we're obedient to it. And just like our dog, no matter how often I screamed or yelled at her to get off that couch, she wasn't going to respond until she learned God's voice. And here we, we learn from Samuel that this is the first time really ever he's hearing the voice of God, so naturally he's not going to recognize it. He's not going to understand it. He's not going to know how to respond to it. But when he responds, he doesn't say, well, there it is, or hey, I finally found it. He goes, hey, there you are. I'm here. I'm ready. He was ready to serve right away. And it was just a lesson to me of, of how often I listen to the voice of God, but I'm not always ready to listen or ready to be obedient. And even when it comes to the voice of God, sometimes we listen to the voice of man more than we listen to the voice of God. I was praying through this, and God gave me this this saying that I've, is stuck with me and I've actually been like figuring out how can I write this or how can I do this because it meant so much to me. It said, he, he told me, he says, was, we sometimes give the authority of heaven to the voice of man. That's so often the authority of heaven that comes from God we give to man and we let him speak into our lives and we let him say things that are not godly and we let him give us advice and we say that is more or that holds more or that does more than the very voice of God. I'm someone that loves words of encouragement. I'm just a words of encouragement guy. And I remember early in my, my years of ministry, if I didn't get a, hey, you did a great job, I always thought I was horrible. Is anyone, ever, is anyone else like that? That you have to hear a, hey, I did all right, or you're, gonna, or you're gonna be like, I'm the worst person in the world. And when you worked with high school students, usually after you're done teaching, not a single one wanted to come up and be like, that was the greatest 10 minutes of my life. All right, a couple laughs. That makes me feel better. <laughs> but too often I looked for the authority of heaven from man. And I didn't seek God's voice. And I didn't seek God's consolement. And I didn't seek God's heart. I seeked the heart of everyone else around me. And those voices that I started to listen to, the things that drove me to be better were not because I wanted to serve God. All of a sudden I wanted to serve others. 
And I, I had humbling moments where God would just humble, my, humble me and just take away everything of this world that I thought I was working on and thought I was doing well, and he would just destroy it. And I would just look at God and be like, God, why are you doing this? Why are you taking this away from me? And, and I would blame God. And I'd say, God, why are you doing this? Yeah, you told me to be obedient. I was obedient. What was it? But it was because I wanted the glory more than I wanted God to see glory. I wanted my name to be greater than I wanted God's name to be greater. And it was a very humbling process. For two years, God had to humble my life and teach me some very tough lessons. So when we talk about voices, it's what voices are you listening to in your life right now? What things are you giving power and authority to speak into your life and say that this is how you're supposed to speak or this is how you're supposed to do? Are you ready to listen to what God has for you? Or are you turning your ear to the things that are not of God and you're finding yourself in this desert alone and dry? It brings me to my next thing of when it comes to our voices, it's the words we speak or our voices spoken. As I said, I'm a words of encouragement type of person. And so when I get non-words of encouragement, it can ruin my day. It can send me straight to the floor. And I go to Proverbs, and I read this Proverbs, Proverbs 17, verse 22. It says, a joyful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. And it was so true for me. And I, and I, was, I was praying through this. There are people here, and I know God spoke this so clearly to me, and he told me to be obedient on this. There are people in this room that are dried up right now, that your spirit is dried up, that you work hard at your job or the ministry or, or whatever you do, and you just need some encouragement. You need God. Well, I'm, I'm here to tell you God is proud of whatever you're doing for the sake of his kingdom. Whatever you are doing, God loves you. Wherever you are at, he will seek you. And if you are here tonight and you are dry and you are weary and you are tired, God wants to meet you this evening. His voice wants to be the one that is spoken to you so you can speak to others. I know for myself, when I try and do things on my own power, I fail. And I get dry and I lose my spirit and I lose all that there is in my life because I'm no longer seeking after his voice and I'm no longer speaking positive words. When working on this message, I thought about the way that I've spoken to people. And there are times I've had non-proud moments that I have said things to people that are not loving, that are not kind, that are not forgiving, that I've yelled at people and I've done terrible things to, to people even in this room. And I, I have to ask people's forgiveness. I have to. I have to go back. And when I was reading again through the Proverbs, in Proverbs 16, 24, it says, Gracious words are like honeycomb sweetness to the soul, and health to the body. And it reminded me that even seeking forgiveness, though, when I speak to people, if I'm seeking out their forgiveness, if I'm seeking from them to understand that I'm sorry for what I did, that is, that is nurture to the soul, not just their soul, but also for mine in my relationship with God. And for some of us, we need to seek out people and ask for forgiveness or even our, our spouse or other friends or people in our lives. We need to seek out what God has because we too often speak from our mouths, as I like to say, we speak without a filter sometimes. And we say things that first come to mind and then all of a sudden you can't get them back. There's a, a saying that says, uh, if, you, if you don't say it, they can't repeat it. It's, uh, it's that pretty, pretty hard for me because... Uh, I want to read you guys the story. There's a, there's a Yiddish uh, forklo, for, forklo, <laughs> folklore, forklode. I don't know what that is. It's a Yiddish thingy. I don't know. Um, but it's a Yiddish story. And it tells of a story of a man who liked to gossip. And as he liked to gossip, he liked to gossip about one person. It had to be the city's rabbi. And he loved to gossip about this rabbi. But one day he felt horrible for the things that he had said. So he goes to the rabbi and he says... Help me make amends. How can I make amends? And the rabbi sighs and looks and goes, I want you to take two pillows. I want you to go to the city center, and I want you to take a knife and cut those pillows up and shake them out and come back to me. The guy was like, well, that's odd, but okay, I'll do it. So he goes, he grabs two pillows, he cuts them open, he goes to the city center, he shakes them out, and he comes back to the rabbi, and he goes, okay, rabbi, I've done what you've asked me to do. Now what? He goes, okay, now I'm going to teach you a lesson about gossip. Because I want you to go back to the city center and I want you to pick up every single one of those feathers. 
So that is exactly what gossip is. When we start to gossip, when we start to talk behind people's backs, you cannot get it back most of the time, and you cannot find it. And from this lesson, it's that very thing. If you don't say it, they can't repeat it. I've been caught in a situation where it was actually funny. I was playing in a golf tournament in Colorado, and I was sitting and eating a meal, and I had my back to some friends of mine, and a friend of mine walked in, and I was playing on his golf team, and it was this golf tournament, and we were having a long drive contest, and I was on a team, and I was going to be the long drive guy. Anyways, the long story is he comes in, and he's upset that I'm on his team, and he doesn't see me sitting there, and he starts bashing me. And I'm right here, so I'm actually laughing as I listen to this guy like, oh, I don't like him, and he doesn't hit it like this, and I don't like and it's just one of those moments that comes straight out of a movie that you get to stand up and like tap him on the shoulder and have him turn around and look at you at the face. And they're like, oh. And it was that I couldn't help but laugh because it was the most probably embarrassing moment for this person. And it was that vindicating thing for me. I was like, yeah, I'm going to show. I'm going to put it right in his face. I'm going to go tap his shoulder right now. Hey, gotcha. And he apologized. And, and, and I laughed and it was okay. But it's the, the very thing about gossip of, he couldn't take it back. There's no way he could say, oh, I didn't really say those things. And it didn't matter if I heard it or others heard it. When you get just a little bit of gossip out there, you can never take it back. And the way you talk about people, I believe, reflects your heart. If you're bitter towards people, if you're gossiping about people, if you're having a problem with people and you just don't want to have a conversation and you complain all the time, I really do believe that reflects your heart and where you're at. When we do complain, it can lead to some down spiraling things. When I was back in the United States and I was leaving the current uh, congregation I was at, I was a complainer. I'll, I'll admit it. They know that. <laughs> I apologize. But every little thing that happened, I had to critique. Every little thing, no matter what happened. And so there came to be a saying that we always had when we had have staff meetings or meetings, we would say we'd always have the meeting after the meeting. Have any of you had those meetings where you get out of a staff meeting and you didn't get to say much, so you have your own meeting right after that to say what you really wanted to say, but you didn't want to say it in front of other people, but you'll say it to the select group of people, so you have your own meeting after the meeting? I had a lot of meetings after the meetings, and I had to get my frustrations out, but it was because I was bitter. It wasn't because I was bitter at them. It was because I was bitter that I felt like God was calling me to do something, and I wasn't able to do it in that season. And it wasn't that they were preventing the, me from doing it. I was preventing myself because I wasn't really seeking after God and saying, God, if this is where you're calling me, if this is what you want from me, if this is where you're leading me, then I have to take a faith to go there. I wasn't willing to take a leap of faith, but I sure was willing to let my mouth take a leap of faith on where I wanted to be. And sometimes our mouths can get us into a lot of trouble. When I think of our voices, I think about our voices raised. Has anybody ever raised their voice before? We've raised our voices before. But the voices I'm talking about when we talk about voices raised, maybe some of you have kids, you've raised your voice before. And sometimes it doesn't make sense and you just start yelling and nothing comes out but a sound and then you just, go, you just look at that person like, and all I can do is make a sound at you. I, I, I did that before, and I looked like an idiot. But when I think of voices raised, I'm not talking about voices raised in anger. I'm talking about our voices raised in praise. And I, and I love worship. And I love the way we get to worship as believers and, and our hearts of worship and what we do with our hearts of worship. And I love reading the Psalms because of David's heart. And I picture David. I mean, picture David, he had his wise counselors around him, but he still wrote all of these songs and all of these worshiping things to the Savior because, and, and, and to God because he so wanted God to know his heart. He so wanted God to be praised and to be lifted up and to know that he loved him and he was going to make mistakes, but he wanted him, God to know that he so desired him. And one of the Psalms I love is Psalms 86, and it's verses 9 and 10. It says, All nations, you have been made in the will to come and worship before you. O Lord, they will bring glory to your name, for you are great and do marvelous deeds. You alone are God. Then he goes on in Hebrew, and in, in not Hebrew, in Hebrews 12, 28 and 29, it says, Therefore, since we have received a kingdom that, we can, that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably 
with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. I want God to be a consuming fire in every single one of our lives. That when we speak of God, when we praise God, that he consumes our mouth, that he consumes our souls, that he consumes our words, he consumes all things because he is that consuming fire. As I was meditating and praying about this message, and uh, it's going to be a short message tonight, I can tell you that already. So uh, I hope you're happy. We'll get you out of here. But when I was praying about this, there's a song that I love by David Crowder, and it's called Here's My Heart. And I wanted to read some of the lyrics and talk about it a little. It says, here's my heart, Lord, speak what is true. Because I am found, and I am yours, and I am loved, and I am made pure, and I have life, and I can breathe, and I am healed, and I am free. Because you are strong, and you are sure, and you are life, and you endure. You are good and always true. You are light breaking through. You are more than enough. You are here. You are love. You are hope. You are grace. You are all I have. You are everything. And as I listened to that song, I thought how appropriate it was that God is, I'm talking about my heart, where I'm talking about what it is. It's this very lyric that says, God hears my heart speak what is true. And how often I haven't let God speak what is true to my own heart and to my own life and all that God has and that he has to say to me. Because what I've done is I've seeked things of this world and I've seeked others in this world and I've not let God speak clearly to my heart. And when it comes to my heart, I'm very protective of it. I don't let a lot of people in. I'll say a lot. I'm an oral processor, like I said. I love to speak. And it's not because I love to hear the sound of my own voice. I don't know why, but I just love to speak. But I will never usually let people in to truly know me because I'm very protective of my heart. And I barely let God speak to my heart. And I went through a pretty rough week this week of, pre- of struggling with God. And I just want to share this, this part of my heart with you this evening is I went through a pretty rough week of struggling with God, wrestling with God, and letting him talk to my heart because I did not want him to touch certain parts of my heart, that I have locked those away that no one could ever see or no one could ever touch. And it had to do with my words and the way I viewed things, and it had to do with some personal things, but what I wanted to bring about from this is there needs to be an unlocking of a lot of our hearts right now. That we have blocked off the words of God from our life because we don't want him to touch those places. That we have taken the words of God that come from the very scripture and they start to speak to our heart. And I've done it before. We skip that page because we're like, I can't take that anymore. I don't want to hear that. Let me read another story. This is just a story. These used to be just stories for me. For some of you, they used to be just stories. But when I read his scriptures now, when I read after those things, when I see the words that God speaks, they're no longer stories. They're words of encouragement. They're ways to live life. They're ways to get out of these things. And this may be elementary for some of us, but I I was praying about this message, and I knew God said that there are people here that need to know that the words they speak are hurting, the words they're hearing are not helping, but they are not listening to me. No matter what my scripture says, no matter what their prayers say, no matter what my response is, they're not listening. And he was just telling me, you have to talk about the fact that we can no longer close ourselves off from God. One of the hardest things we do in our lives, I believe, is accept Yeshua. Because your life is never the same. It doesn't get easier. It doesn't change to be better in the sense of it just becomes this fluffy life or like I have Yeshua and I'm just going to walk on. It does. It becomes tougher because now Yeshua and the Holy Spirit lives inside of us and challenges us and says, you know what? It's time to do more. It's time to cleanse yourself. It's time to be washed in the blood. And it's time to be pure. And it always amazes me that no matter who we'll talk to and they say, but they don't, you know, we get the, the stories of you don't understand what I've done or you don't understand what I do. You know what? I'm always reminded it doesn't matter because God doesn't look at us when it comes to how pure we are, we look at Yeshua, he looks at Yeshua, that he paid the price, that he was pure, and it brought pureness upon us, that when God looks at us, he sees us as pure beings that are loved and cared for, and no matter what is happening in our lives, that we can always come to him, and he will always bring the words of encouragement. His scriptures will always bring the things that we need, but we have to ready ourselves. When Samuel said that he was ready, he meant it. And we have to be ready, just like anyone else in this world, 
to hear the words, and they're not going to be easy, and they're not going to be fun, and they're not going to be fair, but they're going to be life-changing. There's a, a song that I love. It's called Oceans, and I've asked the worship team to sing this tonight. And I love it because there's this line, there's two lines in it that always stick out to me that says, my soul will rest in your embrace, for I am yours and you are mine. There are people here this evening that we need to rest in God's embrace and let him speak. That we are weary, that you are tired, that we are hurting, that this world has done things to us that cannot be taken away, but only the words, the voice of Yeshua can bring healing. And he wants to be in that embrace. And he wants to bring that forgiveness. And I told you it was going to be short. I'm wrapping up right now. I'm going to ask the worship team to come up. But this is why. I prayed and prayed. And we have healing pools tonight. And there's, there's prayer for healing tonight. But I felt that we need to be, spend some time in worship. Because there are people here that need to come down. There's going to be a, a prayer team down here. And you need prayer. And you need to be revived. And I knew it was the right time because how powerful was the Spirit during worship this evening? We started the evening in the Spirit, and we're going to end the evening in a powerful Spirit. Now, we're going to see freedom. We're going to see breakthrough. And that's what I'm believing for people's lives this evening. So will you guys all just stand with me? And we're going to go into a time of worship, and we're going to start with the songs, Ocean. But... Do not pass on the opportunity that maybe God has put before you, if, if God's speaking to you this evening, to say, it is time to come and let me heal you. So let me bring your grievance down. Let his words speak life to you. Know that you have, he is speaking to your heart and he wants to bring these things to you. But you have to take the first step in the same way that Samuel said, I am ready. You have to come forward and say, I'm ready for God to do work in my life.